Sometimes you can forget talk of peaceful country meadows. Instead, it tends to resemble a battlefield with so many machines at work. But what's it all about? Why are they bothering? Why are all these machines out? And what are they for? We'll take a closer look in the video and see just what these sophisticated and interesting machines are being used for and why they're being used. Now we're all familiar with cutting grass and yes this is a grass cutter but it's also a cutter conditioner. Young grass at the period sort of May, June is growing strongly and at that time you've got maximum feed value in there and of course grass is about the ideal feed for cattle especially milking cows but you've got to make it in the right condition at the right time and as quickly as possible and that's where these machines come in this is the John Deere mower conditioner and you'll notice that long drawbar between the machine and the tractor that gives the driver of the tractor the flexibility to make tight turns even when the power shaft's running and that high lift on the mower allows it to clear cut grass without disturbing it. And you see how that turn was almost square for the machine, although the tractor went round in a curve. And that's working back where it's already been cut. And if the grass is leaning in one way, if you can cut in the opposite direction, that gets you the best possible cut. The two hydraulic rams at the back raise and lower the wheels and as the wheels go down the machine goes up. But once it's been cut that grass is bruised as well so it'll dry more rapidly. Now in this shop we're actually looking out of the studio window where these videos are made at a neighbour's outfit at work. New Holland tractor with a tarp on the back. Tarp are Danish manufacturers of grassland machinery. Those coil springs, by the way, are to allow the equipment to float across rough ground. With the best will in the world, silage fields are not always smooth. And if you didn't have that floating action, there'd be a temptation to sculpt the soil under difficult conditions. This is the back swath working back against the hedgerow and there's quite a skill to tractor driving because the the driver's positioning the machine so that he cuts as much grass as possible but without going into the hedgerow and there's quite a bit of anticipation needed when you're driving. Just that swing round and get into position common to all these machines is a very high clearance when they're lifted up because obviously if you drove over a row and it was running you'd disturb that row. This way you're well clear. But it gives you a chance to see the beta mechanism and the cutting mechanism which are actually spinning discs. A bit like an overgrown version of your rotary lawnmower but of course cutting much longer grass and a much higher output. You can see the action of the springs now. And working around that electricity pole just highlights the flexibility. Also highlights what a flaming nuisance they are in the middle of a field. This gives you the business end. Don't ever stand in a position like this to watch a machine because you have to have the confidence in the driver that's operating the machine. 
Well, OK, you've got the grass cut. What are you going to do with it next? Well, I suppose the answer is obvious, really. Load it into a trailer. Once, once again, forget any thought of merry yeoman with pitchforks doing the job. This is well mechanised now. And again, this tractor driver's got a job on his hands because he's got to guess where the operator of the forage harvester is going to fire the grass. And the forage harvester driver is a bit like the commander of a ship. He decides where he's going and the tractor driver with the trailer has got to make absolutely certain he's in the right position so that grass will drop in. The forager driver's got a, a job on his hands as well because he's got to keep that machine working as hard as possible. So he's got to plot the way the rows grow. And he's actually picking up there the combined row where several rows have been swept in. You can see the electronic controls, fingertip controls there. The steering, of course, is fully power steered. And he's got to keep an eye on what's going on as well. So. It's not a job where you relax. It's rather like aiming a fire hose in the sense that you've got that coming down. It looks innocuous there, but there's a lot of weight coming through. It's a very high output forager. And that speed as it's going down, it's fan assisted, is actually being banged down under pressure. And that tends to compress the material into the trailer. You can see it's chopped short. That's the hydraulic ram to adjust the spout, to raise and lower the spout. Now, there's the next trailer coming up behind, because obviously every second wasted as one trailer pulls away and the next one pulls in, is output lost, so it's a finely judged operation. Communications, of course, are up to date, so the mobile phones at work, and that's the outfit you're looking at now. The two drums on the back are to carry additive when they're required because that can be blown into the grass to help fermentation if the customer specifies it. Now we get a closer look at the machine itself, Class Jaguar, produced by Class in West Germany, major combine manufacturer, they diversified into grassland machinery a few years ago and now make some formidable self-propelled machinery. That is a high output machine and of course this is a contractor at work so every tonne he can get harvested is money earned so the men know they've got to press on and the team know what's to be done everybody stays on top of the job the worst possible offence you could commit as a tractor driver would be to collide with a forage harvester but nearly as unforgivable from the farmer's point of view is to allow a lot of grass to fall away from the trailer and miss it. Because that's waste unless it's picked up later. That's the pickup mechanism itself. There's rotating tines underneath that are flicking the grass up. And the rollers serve to compress it. Operator sitting in a comfortable air-conditioned cab. The auger you can see there, that's moving the grass into the centre so that it's fed into the pickup reel and that will do the actual conveying it up to the chopping mechanism that cuts it short. The actual final output is not that different from lawnmower clippings but the output's a heck of a lot more than any lawnmower you've ever come across. Of course the trouble with a machine like this is it will chop grass but it will chop anything else that goes in there but of course if what goes in is metal then you've got a real problem. So there's a metal detector on there and amazingly that will detect even quite small metal fragments in the swath to stop the machine in time. Transport of course is another essential part of the job. 